Okay guys, what we got in front of us is a nice little Mexican Telecaster. He wants a professional setup done on this. And uh, basically the neck's in good shape. The truss rod, uh, we're going to check that here in a minute, make sure that's working, no problems there. But he wants to save these strings, okay? So, what I've got to do is take these off the uh, tuners very carefully and uh, make sure that uh, we have enough here to work with. So let's flip it around. And what I'll do let's see if I can get you a closer look at this. <laughs> there we go. What I'll do is take these off and band them together but I won't take them out of the uh, body itself since they're body through and hopefully it's cross our fingers none of them break that's the last thing that need to happen alright it's got plenty of wind on these this Eastern here wow yeah you can see that okay so we're going to wind it I'll just finger tighten it for right now and get a wrench in there to get the rest of that tightened. Once the other strings are off there, that's just, I've never seen that before. Just got in a hurry, I guess. Of course, I can see the other ones are fine. They're, just, they're not uh, that strangely. They're all underwrapped the uh, first. Uh, Insert that so that works. I'm trying to do my best to save these things. Sometimes you can't, depending on what kind of bend they got in the uh, loop that goes around the tuning peg, the shaft. I mean, especially on these e strings. It looks like you've got enough wrap here on the uh, string there. Let's try this one. E string, I don't know. It's just so tiny. It's, let's see what we got. Oh, wow. Save brand new strings on a, on a setup. I don't want to just, you know, just arbitrarily throw them away. Uh, you know, and charge me four bucks for a new set. Especially if you got a new set of nice strings on here. I think these are XLs. That's what he told me. So let's just uh, save his strings for him. Wrap these up real nice. Sorry guys, put in the camera. Now I'll just take a rubber band and just loop it a few times around. Just to hold it in place. And not interfere with those uh, areas that uh, the strings actually contact in the shafts. Alright? And it doesn't have to be real tight, just got to be there to keep these in place while I move them about the guitar while I, you know, set it up. So, what we'll do is just tie this knot in this. When it comes time to uh, take it, you know, put them back on again, I'll just cut this, you know, band off here. So it won't do any damage. So there we got the strings all set up to save. And we'll just set those right over the top at the back of the guitar so that they won't be bending any oddball direction or get crimped. Okay, so we got a nice clean uh, head here. Let's check all the nuts on this. And I'll do it one real quick uh, run through on these. So hang in there guys while I get a wrench out. If you recall, this is my little uh, pass-through wrench where the uh, shafts can go up into the uh, body of the socket. And I'm just going to put these just a little bit tighter than they are. Not a lot tighter. Just a little bit of tension. Boy, it's on there. 
that's part of the setup. You want to make sure these tuners are nice and snug. Just a little bit, not much with this wrench at all. You know, not bearing down at all on this thing. Just like that. You see that? Uh, hold on. Okay. I get it on there first. Anyway, I'm just putting a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. I'm just putting a tiny bit turn. Just that much. That's it. No more. You don't want to over tighten these and crack them practice wood on this but you don't want them loose so you can't get these off with your fingers anymore but a uh, quick little turn of the wrench will get them off right so now we're going to go to the rest of the setup so hang in there guys we're going to do a little we're going to do a little quick cleanup on these uh this fretboard get some of this finger goo off of it and off the frets as well and there's just a little tiny wear on them and they need to be polished up they're kind of dirty too show some age on them we're going to do a nice cleanup for this guitar for this guy and you can see these frets are rough too because they're taking this towel off with it and that's the kind of goo we get off you know <laughs> Nice finger goo. What's left on it. And I'm going to rub this down nice and hard to make sure I get as much off of it as I can. This is maple. And it's at the point it's going to start staining if you don't keep this thing clean. So, we're going to do that, then we're going to take a nice, just moist towel with hot water and finish up anything left on these frets. Make sure they're nice and clean. But, oh man, that stuff's on, it's a little bit, it's not much on there, but what's on there? It's on there like a brick. Wow, I don't get that. It's all finally coming off though. And it's right up against the edge of the frets. That nice finger goo. That makes any sense. See that? That's what your fingers leave behind. The skin, the oil. And it tears the fretboard up. You need to keep these things nice and clean. Especially on a maple, you don't want to stain it, you know, dark too early unless you're trying to relic it. But there's, okay, that got it. Now it's clean again. So now you're looking at a clean uh, fretboard. <laughs> you get all that finger goo off there, you know, and not that bad. About typical, you know, average. But we still have some dirt on the frets and some. Uh, nastiness on them what we'll do with those we'll polish those up as part of the setup and get those nice and shiny as they can be of course it's not really a high shine these are nickel steel so they give you kind of a dullish uh, shine to it and what else we're going to do we're going to set his pickup straight they're a little bit uh, low and high they're both well they're both they're high and low on his setup and he's got his bridge set uh, all straight across all the same exact level we want to get that uh, curvature to it that you need on a uh, telecaster and what i'm going to do is show you how we check that all righty and show you the the radius all right these radius tools here okie dokie so we'll do the radius this is a 10 radius which is what this is, it's a 10. I think, if I'm looking right. Nice clean fretboard now. And let's see, I think he may have put some graphite down on the, uh, 
nut itself and what we're going to do is get in there so we can't just clean that out we're not going to file anything but we're just going to use our files to clean that out with if we can if we can't we'll just stop you can't get it right out of there You know, some of it's coming out. And what I do, guys, I use a really tiny file in comparison to the size of the nut slot. So I'm not really filing down in or the size of the nut itself. I'm just barely touching so I can kind of see if I can get some of that stuff out of there. In a minute, I'll take a uh, warm towel again so I can't clean it out. There's some of that came out. And what I do, guys, I don't use graphite on a uh, nut. A little cleaner. I use a uh, stuff called Super Lube. And it's perfect for what the job's done. And what you do, you put one single drop on each uh, nut slot to get them to work properly. And it lasts for months this lube type stuff does a great job I think that may come out with some hot water come off but uh, you really don't want to use graphite you know because that just gets nasty over a period of time and uh, you know super lube is not that expensive in hobby stores it's like five bucks for a little tube of it and I think you can get it online too it's called super lube now, I know I've shown you guys this before, the Super Lube tube I have. I had it for years because, like I said, you only put a drop on there. Now, we'll take some uh, warm water on a towel. I'd like to get some and uh, cl finish cleaning that nut up and finish on the fretboard. Then it all cleaned up and nice, right? And we're not talking wet, wet, we're just talking damp. We'll dry it off afterwards. So hang in there, guys. Well, now, what I've got here is just some house water, household water, and spray bottle that's warm. Then we'll finish off cleaning that nut off, get that uh, graphite out of there or dirt, and just give the fretboard once over. So you can't get that graphite out of that nut. Like I said before, those little tiny files are not doing anything to this nut at all, just touching the sides of it. Try to clean it up. Oh, there, that's about as good as it gets. And yeah, we got a clean board now, except for the fresh thing to be polished up. Nice and clean, clean, clean. All right. Now, next, we're going to check the relief on this guitar. See what we have. And I've got the perfect little tool to do this. I can get it out of the holder. Now, if you guys don't have one of these things, you can always use a... Uh, <clears throat> straight edge you know like a ruler to do the job and just check it and see what you come up with and that's gonna be hard to see from where that camera is so let's lower it down so you can see that neck relief and you can see underneath it it's just got oh sorry it's got just a tiny bit of relief on it. See that gap between? See the 5th and 7th and ninth. And then of course it goes to the 12th, it's touching again. So you got just a little bit of common relief, just a tiny bit. Uh, not much to speak of at all. But, it's better to set, leave it set like that, like you had it, than change it up and put more relief on it, really straighten it, and not have him happy. 
course, his uh, comments to me were he wants to sing as fast as he can get it. The faster the action, the better, right? Well, I think the more adjustments were come out of the, the uh, bridge than the uh, neck itself because it's just set up very uh, strangely. It's all set up the same height, those saddles, and those need to follow the uh, radius of the uh, neck, right? But they're not supposed to be uh, tilted. They're supposed to be nice and parallel with the body, but uh, this will start a little lower, it's go a little higher, a little higher, then lower again, back, you know. They follow that radius exactly, so you can set your radius gauge on that and adjust them if you have a mind to and try and get them as close to that as you can. That way those strings will play properly and make it easier on him to play. Because right now he's got his uh, low, his high E string, the same height as his B and G, which shouldn't be. And uh, then of course we'll check the action on it and see if it needs to be adjusted any anymore. Now that we got the strings off of it, we'll clean up the uh, pickup plate on it, get it polished up and shined up. So the strings are in the way. <coughs> and again, I just used common household water. And I just, and it's just a very lightly damp towel I use. I don't use anything sopping wet or even considered really wet. That's why I use this little spray job just to get this enough dampness on it to do the work. And we'll get all that finger schmutz off there. Just like that. A lot on there. Now for a little dry towel, just to dry it off and polish it up. No worries about the pickups, we're we'll going to adjust that later anyway. Because it's not in there properly. And it looks like he's put Seymour Duncan's in here. I'm not really sure which uh, Seymour Duncan's got in there, but uh, when he put it in there, he didn't adjust it uh, according to Hoyle. <laughs> That makes any sense at all, Hoyle. <laughs> That's the deck of cards, Dave. Anyway, it's not adjusted properly, so we're going to adjust both pickups. We're going to clean this pick guard up, spray it directly, just a little tiny drop of water, just on the board itself, and just run it through, get any dust or dirt off, and not get it down any holes on this guitar. And that's pretty clean already. This guitar is pretty clean to begin with. And what we're going to do next is flip this guitar around. We're going to uh, clean up the uh, control panel for the volume and the tone. Get it polished up just with the warm water again. And put our tools away. <laughs> Back where they belong in our new tool holder. I couldn't believe how quickly this thing filled up. It's like, wow, this stuff was in the drawer of shame. That's amazing. So... That's what we'll do next. So hang in there guys, we'll flip this guitar around. Well, we're gonna clean this panel up. It's gonna need a flathead to get in there and take these uh, tighten downs off these knurled knobs, just like that. Let's see, those are at one o'clock when they're spun all the way to the right. So I'll put those back where they belong. Since there's no uh, exactness on the uh, shaft itself and I get this nice and clean and polished you gotta really get in there past these knobs otherwise you just do a half-ass job and again we're just going to use water on a clean up cloth towel and clean that up oh, that finger goo off those nuts and once that's gone, we'll polish it up with a dry one. Because we want everybody to be pleased with their instrument when they get it back. And yeah, some people won't go to all the trouble of actually taking the knobs off to uh, 
clean these up. This, you know, give me a quick brush over, which uh, I've seen at some shops. Like, wow, you know, if they skip that simple little, you know, cleanup job, what else have they done? You know, uh, we're going to polish it up now, nice and clean and shiny again. Yay! And all that finger smutch because of the contact of the uh, tuning knob is gone. Yay! So now he has some clean polished chrome and the knobs go back on around one o'clock, around right there. So I'll put those back about one o'clock and tighten down. Hang in there guys while I do this. And don't ever over tighten, just tighten them, give them down good, but don't go crazy on it. End up stripping out a, a screw. Okie dokie, now it's time to polish up these frets and clean them up right make them semi shine again of course we can't really dress them you know like I'd love to do uh, you know there are some uh, cowboy chord indentions in the frets but that's just part of it you know wear and tear of the guitar and uh, this low end looks like there's some uh, there's some wear on it you can see it but not much there's not a heck of a lot of wear on this guitar but uh, when you start getting deep you know on certain uh, notes you need to be aware that uh, a recrown's on its way. So, guys, take a look at your your frets and see if there's not some low dent, you know, deep dents into it, and save yourself some money and uh, have it recrown rather than refret later on, because that can be expensive. Even at half price, is not cheap. You know, that's why I charge charge half price. But that can get up there in the money. Now, what I use to do this with, what I use, guys, is a little aluminum guard to help keep your fretboards protected. Ah, let's fall off. And I use this little tool. It's supposed to be for recrowning, but there's no way it can recrown. It's just not enough paper to it, and it just won't work, you know. But it does a good job of polishing up frets. You know, I'll, I'll give it that. It does a good job polishing, but uh, really bad job crowning. <laughs> So we got this, and we have what we call the steel wool. The steel, I'm oh, sorry guys. The steel wool, right? Grade 4 ot, And it cleans these things up very nicely after you've taken the uh, sandpaper to them. And believe it or not, this little sandpaper tool actually does a pretty good job cleaning. You know, on the polished ends. But not crowning. So if you think you're saving some money by going and get this, you know, tool off of the net to crown, you're nuts. It's only meant just to slightly polish. Take it across there, get the goo off. Get them nice and shiny again. All good. You can't see that. Perfect. Anyway, you take a little tiny piece of uh, steel wool, you pull it off, form a little ball like this so, so it doesn't touch the board. Once you've used your sanding tool, right, you come back on it like this and better shot of that. Sorry, guys. And you polish them up like this. And this is what leaves them nice and shiny and nice and smooth, too. 
You know, these, they really don't need any sand. The dirt's not that bad. And the, deep, the deep ends aren't that bad either, guys. Basically, all it needs is some uh, nice steel wool to them. Can you see that? I hope you can. No, you can't. <laughs> This one really just needs a steel wool. It doesn't need any sandpaper on it. They're not that dirty and not that messed up. So we're just going to steel wool them. They're nice and shiny for me. And they're shining up. You know, as best as a guitar is freaking shine. It's not like it's, you know, sterling silver or anything. But we'll get them back and shiny like they were when you bought it. You know, at least that much. But they will still have those indentions in there. Can't get those out. Not with that tool, you can't. Ah, uh, those are coming up nice and shiny again, I think. And we'll just go up and down on the fretboard with our steel wool. Now, when we get down to the uh, last few frets, what I do is just put some paper over the... Uh, Ah, somebody likes me. We put some paper over the uh, pickups so they're picking stuff from the uh, so they're picking any tiny bits of uh, metal flake going to the pickup because it's magnetic. Now, on all these guitars, especially the ones that people play lead on. You go, I want a low fast action. Well, I'm going to give it to them. But you got to help me, guys. All right? I'll get it low, as the book says. You know, four and three. But any lower than that, I need to have you here to adjust it. And, you know, that could be a neck adjustment, secondary neck adjustment. That could be a saddle adjustment, bridge adjustment number of things but you've got to be here because you're going you know you may have the tiniest bit of buzz on a few of the strings but not all of them all right let's go on to the next ones nice and shiny shiny and this is doing a pretty good job still wool alone like i said you really don't need that uh, sandpaper on these you're already pretty well set up and then later you know on the Past the seventh frets, you know, they're all fine. There's no indentions in them. They're just dirty. You know, they just need to be polished, which is what I'm doing. And they're coming out really nice. Nice and shiny once again. Cool, huh? <laughs> so, uh, steel wool, tricks of the trade. Of course, you want to make sure if you do this, you're not doing it freehanded. These little guys, you know, you've got to have them. I think you can get these on line for like five bucks or less, but those are super thin ones. And I've gone through three sets of these already. So you don't want the super thin ones for five bucks. You want the substantial ones for seven bucks. <laughs> Some they're gonna last you a little bit longer than just a few polish ups and you've already scratched through the edges of them. You can see this one's wearing pretty much, you know, true to form. But I tell you what, guys, that absolutely saves fretboards. Because I don't care how good you are or how steady your hand is, getting in there on the sides of these frets, you know, takes you know a guide, a guide like this or a uh, tool like that. They are invaluable. Of course, I also use these to heat up frets while I'm removing them, and do crown work sometimes. It depends on what uh, instrument it is. And what I'm doing. And if you watch some of my videos, you'll see I've been doing a lot of refret and recrown lately for these guitars. And brother, have they needed it. <laughs> and what's really nice about this, you can't see this on video, but I can see it. The difference between this one and this one. It's like a shiny versus a very dull and very dull. I mean, very dull. 
But once you see them all together, it's like, ah, what'd you do? You didn't do anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes it did. It really does shine these things up. And it doesn't take any metal off while it's doing it. It's just basically getting all the grime off of them. Makes them nice, nice to play too. It makes them silky smooth again. Unless you got really sweaty fingers. <laughs> oh, I wish you could see the difference in this. The before and after. Maybe you can, but it's not easy. See how dark that one is compared to this one? That's actually what a shine up does. A polish up. Pretty slick, huh? Makes the guitar overall look better, I think. Of course, you know, after a week's of playing, after a week's worth of playing, you gotta do this again. Cause they do go back to regular. They get dirty again. And the smart thing to do is just keep the whole thing clean. You know? And all these maples just use warm water and a cloth. Just wipe them down all the way real nice. And the backs too, guys. Don't forget the backs of your guitars. That's very important. Back of the neck. You don't want that getting all fritzed up. I had one guy write me and told me his his uh, Les Paul, the uh, finish on it, had gone gooey on him. And actually sticking to his fingers. I don't know what that was all about. Never got back with me. Maybe it's some kind of porno trick or something. I don't know. But said the back of his neck of his guitar had gotten sticky. And it's like, huh? You know? On his Les Paul, his Gibson Les Paul. But, well, has it been near heat? What's going on? I, I, I really wanted to see it so I could fix it. But he never showed up, so I guess it was just a, you know, some kind of weird pun or nasty inside joke or something. I'm not sure. Of course, I get bunches of those in the emails. Let's see. And while I'm at it, guys, I want to make sure to tell you one more time, do not send me gifts. It's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, if you do, uh, I'll put them on the you know show and show everybody what you sent, but please just don't do it. You know, there's very few things that I need in life. I'm very easy, you know. <laughs> so anything you send me, most likely I've already got it if I wanted it. But I do want to say thank you to everyone who sent me stuff. It's really nice, and one of these days I'll get a chance to show it. But what I'm trying to do is not show it, because that encourages other people to do it too. You follow me? So the guy sent me that bunch of strings and that polish and stuff. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And yeah, coming from New York is really nice. But uh, if I give you a plug on my channel, more than likely, everybody else is going to do the same thing. I have all these gifts I have to, you know, account for with the IRS. <laughs> Especially if they're expensive. That, we want to stay away. There goes a the neighbor's girl walking her dog. What's nice on days like this in, in the November is that we've got a true Indian summer. And it is just nice and warm. It's like 75 degrees out today. Nice and sunny, no clouds. So it makes it really nice to open the shop up. And I'm like about uh, probably half the other you know guitar repair shops around in their own house. They have a workshop in their house or beside their house or their garage or their basement. To save money. That way they can actually offer you work at a lesser cost. It's also a way I can offer you free setups, free professional setups. For free. And I do all these for free. And I'm charging half price for all of the uh, additional work they want done. If I can use it on my videos. So I want you guys to see this. Whoops, <laughs> speaking of see this, let's get back to this 
Let's get this back in camera view. <laughs> Darn it. I'm right here. I just finished this one. I don't know if you can see it or not, but man, they look so much nicer looking down that fretboard. They're all nice and shiny. Like this guitar one is new. Wow. Of course, the sad part about it is once they're all shiny and nice and new looking, you can't tell. It's like, did you polish those? Because <laughs> all that schmutz is off of them. That dullness is gone. I'm gone, long gone. And this is kind of what takes a long time with guitar setups. Just the uh, little tiny things that make it so nice to have them done by somebody. You know, little work that no one knows what to do or how to do it. <laughs> or what to use to do it. Now I've had people get out steel wool they had laying around the house and it's the wrong grade and just scratch the crud out of their you know, frets and write me and say, hey, well, you used 4 aught. That's the last you hear from them, you know. <laughs> they should hang their head in shame. They don't follow instructions. You don't want something so abrasive it's going to sand the crud out of these frets, guys. You just want something that's going to put a nice little shine on them. And these don't require polish or anything. Just take some elbow grease and the right uh, type of uh, steel wool. Especially these jumbo frets on this fender. And they come up really nice. I mean, real nice looking. And I don't know, you spend about 30 minutes to 45 minutes doing this kind of thing. You get the result. My really re reward of this is getting these on video to show you guys how to do these kind of things yourself. But when these guys pick these guitars up and they're all smiles, you know, after I've fixed them, that's really what's rewarding. All right, I'm going to switch to a smaller uh, guide here. So hang in there, guys. While I search through my bucket of shame, <laughs> I already named my stuff, call it the bucket of shame. Wow. What have I done with that one? These are all the small tools I've got that I can't put them anywhere else because I just lose them so fast. Obviously I've had that just recently and I've set it down somewhere. And where have I set it? I don't know. But here I am, I'm left. Oh, here it is. Alright, make sure to cut all that. Okay, now I've got my small uh, template. Get these last two smaller ones, right? And what I do, guys, I keep turning the steel wool and splitting it apart, getting a new cleaner side to work with. And that way it cleans up quicker and nicer. So I'm just not using the same spot over and over again. Helps to get that abrasiveness back. Of course, these are just barely abrasive. They are more for polishing than they are for abrasion, but uh, they do an excellent job. You see this, guys? No, of course you can't. Sorry, guys, I'm right handed. <laughs> anyway, let me finish the last one and go on. Let me get it all cleaned up and nice and shiny. Match the other ones. What's neat about these little templates though is you can actually move these uh, to each end, right? Go to this end, then go to this end, so you don't actually go over and touch the fretboard itself. There she be, nice and shiny again, like it was new again. Isn't that neat? So, these go back into my little bucket of shame. <laughs> that old steel wool gets thrown away, and uh, oh yeah, 
once again it's grade four aught and I think it's like five or six bucks nine bucks something like that it's not expensive at most you know hardware stores so get you some of this and go to it on cleaning up your frets now now that that's all done said and done we could polish it but uh, the strings are not going to be in the way because the fretboard as well as this all being cleaned up so the really thing to do next is put the strings back on and start working with the uh, action and go from there so hang in there guys all right well we want to put these strings back on here now this e string is really i think overwound on this uh, peg but we'll see we'll see we'll see what we come up with but it was actually under the nut because that's just bizarreness but we'll wind her up and we'll do this by hand to start with because i may have to cut some of the string off at the end maybe just way too much on here because of what happened because on this big thick E string you don't want it you know doubling over I mean, that's what we're about to do we're going to cut this. this is just way too long wow darn it because it'll end up wrapping over itself three or four times on the uh, spindle and that we can't have so this is the only one we have to cut I hate doing this but uh, there's just way too much on here what you want to do guys oh boy you can see this okay here we go what you want to do is take it you know to this right here this next spindle to get it you know a good two wraps on it or one and a half wraps right not this far and what we oh god we have a crimp in the wire too that could just break right off and it is short short damn it well that happens uh, sometimes you can save string sometimes you can't but if you look if I can show you this there's actually a crimp in the wire you see that yeah you can see it that means that's going to snap right in half and there's just not a lot left there to, to catch darn it but I will try I will try to catch some of this and it snaps, it snaps. I can't help it. Alright, we're going to take it up like it should be. Not with lost extra on it. Cut that. Bring it in there. Oh, man, it's right on that crimp, too. Darn it. And take them under. And since this has issues to it, I'm going to do this by hand, guys. Sorry, I can't see anything, but this one's got some issues. The string does, and I don't want to use my green little monster and do it too fast and just snap this thing short. Like I said, you only want to take it two times around the spindle. You don't want much more than that. under everything so that it snaps in place and holds it tight what it does it snakes or coils under pushing the string up against the top of the spindle so that will hold and I almost got too many wraps on this one myself I should have taken it even shorter maybe where that crimp was or it made the snap when I put, you know, take it to tune But we were there, we were there, we were there with two turns on that, so I didn't lose much. We got two turns on there so he can go down to as low as he wants to go with alternate tunes. Okay? So we did manage to save that string. Hurrah! <laughs> Let's see what we got going on with this one. Same problem. 
this one I think was done right. There wasn't too much uh, extra left on this one. But we'll see, we'll check it. Anytime you have to do a string like this, restring them, it's best to, uh, you know, if you can, trim it down to the right length. And this is way too long too. Okay, what you want to do is just go down, to, you want to go two, two and a half at the most down and not be left with a lot of extra string on there because what it does, it wraps over itself. There's no place to go. Okay? When that happens, you got problems with the tuning sometimes. It'll slip. Let's go in there with this one too. And put a nice bend to it. New spot. And take it around the tree. Sorry guys. I'm going to have to move the camera around if you want to see this. There's just no way I can do this with the... Uh, little green tuner because it's just not going to stay on there. It's one, it just wants to come off. This darn thing. The string doesn't want to stay on. And that's because it's being restrung. That just happens. It wants to come out of the hole. And until I can get a couple loops on here, it's going to continue to try to do that. And I don't want the end piece be so close to the bobbin and it slips out when he's tuning it. Ah, oh, we got it. Okay, now we got it. Yes, we. I think we managed to save this one too unless it snaps on that uh, on a crimp somewhere on it I haven't seen. Well, it's like I said, when you bend these things, you know, around the spindle, sometimes they'll be bent just a little too much and they put a crimp in the wire itself past the windings down to the main wire itself and that's a problem because then it just snaps off. That's how you break strings. But two times around, that can handle any type of tuning you want to do to it. Drop, open, whatever you want. The two is more than enough. I want to get to that original spot on this string where it tuned up. At least, and I'll have a break. I didn't think I'd be worried about the wound string, but I am kind of concerned. So that really makes me concerned about the E. Okay, so we're there again. Saved another one. Was well, like I said, the uh, shape of the radius on this thing is all wrong. I don't know what else to do so you can see what I'm doing here. Keep it in camera somehow. Without my hands being in the way. So this, oh, this one is cut right. This one actually has been cut properly to the right uh, length. So this shouldn't be a problem. I don't have any extra though. That's always not good. Always good to have some extra on there, guys. I think I can actually take my my little spinner out and get it going. Yeah! Anyway, there's some things on here I need to tell you about on this uh, video so I'm going to go ahead and keep the I'm not going to cut this out because my hands are in the way guys I'm not going to move it right now just do these last few strings well, but I want you to hear about the crimps and about saving strings so I'm going to keep this on the, uh, the, the video and not cut it from the uh, actual finished video so you'll hear it and know about you know if it comes up in your endeavors ah that thing broke so fast On this string, this is the G string, and I uh, didn't leave much on this one at all. Jeez. <laughs> G for G. I can save this one or not. So far, I've been kind of lucky.
Of course, the G string is always the pain in the butt, it seems. It's got to be under this, not over it. Never fails a G-string, the pain in the butt no matter what you're doing, playing with it or tuning it up, whatever. It's the one that goes out of tune. It's the one that tears your fingers up. It's the one that jabs you. It's always that darn G-string that uh, gives you a hellish time. But I've got to get two twists on this or two times around on a spindle to verify it's going to have any type of tuning he wants. There should be plenty on here, even with me poking this through a little bit further. This is a good video to show you. And, well, not show you, but tell you about how to save these springs. I'm talking to you about it. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go ahead and change this up. I want to... Uh, Change the camera up so you can see these last two. And what you do to save these strings. Alrighty. So hang in there. Let's see if I can get this to work this time. Got my big hands in the way. Good grief. Oh boy. It's just hard to do this. And be on camera. <laughs> Darn it. Come on, hands. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to move this around even more to get this right. So I can get in there and show you what I'm doing. But I have to see what I'm doing as well. So I'm going to put this straight. This tuner. And one thing's nice about this tuner, uh, these tuners, are they very, very nice. Very nice tuners. Still got a lot of life left in them. Alright. So I'm going to get this started. I can. Darn it. I don't want to just flip it over and, and, and be over the top. I want to be under. Which means I gotta just take it around. It's like it was new. pull it out of the spindle. Alright, now I think I can grab my tool and do it. My little handy dandy thing. All right, I caught it. Uh -huh. All right, there's another string saved. If it doesn't snap off at the last second, which sometimes they do. <laughs> Cross your fingers, guys. I'm going to do this rest by hand. I don't want to overdo this and snap it at the last minute. Wow. I don't know if I'm in the camera or what, but I'm <laughs> I'm sure trying to show you what I'm doing, guys. Not easy. Okay, now we got it in there. Yay! 
Another string saved. Oh boy. Now comes the fun part. Getting that E string in there without breaking it. Of course, the trick is the coil is put on these strings. Once you put them into the tuners, you want to get that top coil underneath the uh, let's see, the bottom coil underneath the top. Which uh, if you just put it on there and just shove it on, it'd be great, but you can't. Here we go. All right, might as well just go for it. You didn't leave a lot to work with on this one. Especially on the thread through. Alright, come on. I just gotta get it started. One, one loop and I've got it. One time around, I've got you, buddy. Stay in there, stay in there. Uh-uh, uh stay under, gotta be under that loop. Come on, you're almost there. Sorry for my hands, guys. I just don't want to lose this string after saving them all. You let me a bitch you break the last one. <laughs> Trying to save it. Under the string tree. Oh, look at that. There's so much coil on the end of this string. On this little E strings like this, if you can't get the coil marks around or the coil shapes around the spindle that's a problem that's the break there about to happen so we're getting close oh yeah there we are uh, at least we're up on it okay so we saved a set of strings for him way out of tune <laughs> But, $12 says, strings do not get wasted. I always like that when I can do that. It just takes time and uh, patience, basically. You know, take your time when doing it. Don't get in a rush. So that's done. Next step is to set the action on this. Gauge it, get that going then adjust the uh, saddles and the neck if needed. Look how shiny those frets are, isn't that nice? But as you can see, they're all flat across the top and they need to have a, you know, radius shape to them. And they are, it looks like they, they have been insinated, uh, right? And sometimes I'll start and just put them all at one level, just all straight across and then just go from there. But We'll check and see what we've got once we get these things tuned up, how the intonation is on this and the action. So, let's get her tuned up and start working on this action, see what we can do for him. Hang in there, guys. This is the original setting this guitar came in at, and you can see the, uh, the low E string is very, very low to the fretboard, and it buzzes like crazy. Pretty much every one of the strings are buzzing. Uh, what I'm going to do is adjust the neck and the saddles, both of them. Uh, the uh, saddles are just, you know, straight flat across like this without any type of uh, radius to them. I'll adjust that as well. Intonation comes later, but in the meantime, uh, I've got this thing to tune. I will be checking it back and forth, back and forth as I adjust these. But my first object is to get my little radius tool out and put this to the radius 
it's supposed to be the flat You hide so no, I didn't take you off my spindle. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so we've got to take this flat one and turn it into this. This kind of shape. Which is not all heck of a lot off, but <laughs> that needs to be done and raised as well get that buzz go away so we're going to do both ends we're going to do the neck give some more relief to it because just a tiny bit on it we're going to raise the saddles up just a tiny bit and then check the action because it, as it is right now yeah the action is too low uh, that's why you're getting that darn buzz you know on the uh, frets on every single string so we're going to adjust this back to regular uh, four and three I'm sorry, five and three on this one, and uh, go from there. So hang in there, guys, while you get that set up. All right, what I've done, guys, I've raised every single of these, uh, see, every single one of these up, but kept them in the radius uh, shape of it, right? Uh, lower, higher, higher, lower, lower, lowest kind of thing, you know. And I raised them up high enough to where they don't buzz anymore, but. That's not what he wants. He wants this as low as possible. So what I do next is I tune it up to verify that we had no fret buzz. And then I go through and check if how much I can lower these, each one. And then check the, the uh, relief on the neck to make sure you know, I'm uh, uh, as good as I can be there as well. Right? So... Like I said, next step is to tune this thing up and test it for any fret buzz and go from there. So hang in there, guys, while I set this up. Okay, well, we still have a lot of fret buzz. And I've raised them up pretty high. So, next step, relieve the neck. Put some relief in that. So, untune it. We'll get on the neck and address that. Uh, we'll get on the neck and adjust the truss rod to put some relief in this guitar. It's got just the tiniest amount right now. It's going to need some more to try to keep this action where it needs to be without fret buzzing. So hang in there, guys. <laughs> Hi, my name is Scott, and uh, I've got this Mexican Telecaster here that Dave has set up for me, and I'm going to play it uh, for the first time since he's uh, done some work on it. Go ahead and play it. Let me tell you, uh, it's all set up as a common, like uh, 564 and 464, but I want to lower that according to your taste. Okay. okay? So you play it and you tell me what you like or not. You any fruit buzz? shouldn't <laughs> anyway that's at the regulation high like the vendor says put them this way yeah okay I probably can go a couple 64s lower but there's okay. gonna be some buzz at the end I don't mind a little buzz because I don't really play up high very much I like to feel good about right here mm -hmm. so I might a little bit lower okay we can do that okay that's why you're here okay it already plays a million times better than it did I'll tell you that well, it's intonated properly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, this might cause some buzz, so don't panic. You know, that's what you're here for. You're here to get all these adjusted, okay? I don't, like I said, the buzz doesn't bother me. I'm not a lead guy. I can play a little melody here and there. Yeah, that can't go any lower. That's as low as it goes. That's as low as it goes. And this one can lower just a little bit more. And that's about it. And even below this, it's going to start buzzing, cousin. <laughs> I 
Uh, try that and see what you think. Okay. Where'd you put the pet? Oh, I'll give it back to you. Dude, you can hold on to that. These are free. Help yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. I like this. They give me these fuckers all the time. It's free shit, you know? Yeah, this feels really good now. Feel good? Okay. See, that's what it's all about. If you have a luthier that works with you, doesn't say, here's your guitar. It's yeah. 464, it's 364. Get, it out. Get the fuck out of here. You know? Yeah. No. Even on this PRS, I'm doing the very same thing I'm doing with you. When he comes over, it'll be set up to standard, and then we'll go either up or down. You got me? Yep. That's what we want. Now, let's stop for a second, and we'll get you to play this. You're still on camera, so make sure to smile. <laughs> Don't frown. We're high. So, here you go, plug her in. Oh, you need to tune her on. I can tune it by ear. You got one? I can tune it by ear. Okay, go ahead. You like Diet Coke? I do, but I just had a lunch and I had to drink a bunch of soda. So okay, all right. Okay. I don't think that's it yet. Nope. You don't want tuners. I got one right here. I got one right here. Okay. Now I double wrap those strings, you know, twice around. Yeah. But here's the funny part. Oh, this is on D, D sharp. Yeah. Anyway, here's the funny part about this. Okay. On that E string, right? You had the string wrapped under the nut. Uh oh. On this. Are you serious? I'm serious. I got it on film. Is actually wrapped under the nut. Well, why the hell did that happen? I put the strings on. That's my own. That's why I need people like you, Dave. <laughs> that's just bizarre. I've never seen it before. Anyway, you know what? I never know how short to cut them, so I just wrap, I end up with too much string, and then they end up just going everywhere. Okay, here's the deal. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you. Once you come through, make your hole straight right there. When you put them through, mm -hmm. have it straight, and on this string, go up to here and cut it. Right? Okay. Or back it out, actually, and wrap it. You know, twist it then. You get me? Everything with the last two, you go up to the next peg hole. One over like that. Yeah. That over to that one, you know, you skip one. Okay? okay, except for the last two, you only go about one and a half up, right? Okay. That way you get two wraps around the, the post to make sure you go up and down your tuning. That's a good guideline. I didn't know that. Yeah. Trick of the trade, dude. <laughs> Pickup is here, it needs to be lowered. Go ahead, keep playing, keep playing. Yeah, okay, yeah, I got lowered. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got lowered. Go ahead and shut her down. Okay. It's not the same tone it should be. It should have a little more oomph to it. Let's get it lower. Let's do this right, Dave. Alright. Now I gotta get my gauges to get this thing right. Yeah, I'm excited to get your opinion on this one too. What is it? It's a P bass, 78 P bass. Oh that's right. You look yeah. like your bass, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I um what does it need done? Well, I, I just had it. Well, okay, I found this second hand. Got a steal of a deal. It was yeah. in the garage find. Oh, cool. I, I, um, I did all the electronics as far as cleaned them up, cleaned the pots. I um, Then I had it set up and put some strings on it. Bingo. And the action is okay, but uh -huh. I think maybe the nut is too low, and I ordered a nut. I, don't, I haven't got it in yet. There you go. Done.
Oh, he didn't know. Okay. Hey, me. I don't know. I just want you to look at it. All right, go ahead. Pick her up. It's time to Plug her back in. Okay. Now you're set, dude. That's a custom setup. You got it. And should love to play on it. Ready? Yep. Go for it. The pickup, but uh, you don't get the whole range of the pickup. Yeah, no, it's. Listen to it. It's so clear. Bingo! <laughs> and those press came up like new when I polished them, you know? Oh, listen to this, dude. Yeah. Now, remember the party, right? The jam? I told you about the jams? Yeah. Remember, because when I call you up, you got you have like a week to get over here. Right. So it's kind of schedule yourself, right? Okay. We'll have 10 guitarists, a couple of uh, drummers, a couple of keyboardists, singers, all kinds of stuff. And we all set up in the garage and face out that way from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. My wife cooks uh, uh, Angus uh, hamburgers, Angus beef hamburgers and hot dogs. And uh, has some kosher food too, just all kinds of shit, you know. And the neighbors bring all kinds of wine and beer and liquors. Nice. Big party. The, the, the whole circle's cool with it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, we shut the block down. Do you um do you have drums too? I have drums. You guys need a drummer? Always need another one. Yeah. Yeah. You need a drum. You'll be the probably the, well, you'll probably be one of two. Maybe you'll be the only one. Maybe you have Two drummers like the Grateful Dead? What's that? Like the Grateful Dead, two drummers? Yeah, really. But no, no, you probably you may be the only one this time, it depends. Oh. Anyway, here's your carpet. <laughs> For your drum, we use this. Okay. It's a lot of fun, dude. We have a PA system we use, you know? So it's kind of like a small club type thing and the neighbors dig it. We all share, you know, so we goes, I don't know how to play three bird. Three of them go, yeah, we do too. We'll all jump in, right? Or I don't know how to play uh, Lucy in the Sky, and one guy will play, or whatever. You know, we all take turns, because there's all levels of play. You know what I'm saying? Some guys are virtuoso, some guys can play anything. But some guys are just beginning. They only know one or two songs. So that's cool too, so we'll let them play it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of free food and drinks. When's the next one? Do you know yet? Not yet. I don't know. Just had the last one two, three weeks ago. Cool. Dude, I love awesome. that. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Well, Thumbs up for Dave. Okay. Thanks, guy. Okay. Guys, uh, Dave and Tex, any questions, give me a holler. Bye. <laughs>